The third step of molding is to lay up the mold. The first layer to apply is the surface coat. Since this will be an epoxy mold, an epoxy surface coat is selected. Dennis uses the number 458 Akimi epoxy surface coat. Some people prefer a white surface coat to see air bubbles and pinholes, but Dennis likes dark colors better, so he mixes some black pigment in. The surface coat is now ready to apply. This layer will create the surface of the mold from which future parts will be pulled. This material is quite thick and it leaves brush marks in the coat, but as it flows out, the brush marks go away. Now what I want to do is back some of the surface coat into the corner here. I put that on kind of thick right there, all the way around it. This is going to be the corner of the mold, actually the edge of the mold. After I have the corner completely filled in, now I'm going to use the one inch brush, which we have here to make the lip. This is actually going to become the lip of the mold. And I'm just going to neatly go around the whole mold. I tend to go over just a little bit over an inch because when we trim this section, it won't be real critical. Going past the back just a little bit. Again, this will be trimmed off later in the process. Make sure I have no empty spots or uncovered areas. You can see the brush strokes melting in and flowing out quite well. Epoxy surface coats and polyester gel coats require special attention to time as well as thickness. You can proceed to the next coat too soon or you can wait too long. There are a variety of methods to test the surface coat to determine if it's ready, but the easiest method is a simple brush test. You want to proceed when the brush still leaves a mild impression but does not disturb the surface coat. This takes from 45 minutes to over an hour depending on the size of the batch that you mix. After the surface coat passes the brush test, a second layer of surface coat is applied. You will need to mix a fresh batch as any remaining from the first batch will also have begun to cure. After the second layer of surface coat also passes the brush test, you will be ready to begin laying up with fiberglass. First, Dennis mixes a small batch of the number 88 epoxy resin, number 87 cure, and number 22 glass microspheres to make a paste. He measures and mixes the resin and cure very carefully to be sure he has the right amount of cure for the amount of resin. Since this is a 5 to 1 system, he measures 1 ounce of resin and 0.2 ounce of cure and stirs them together carefully. The number 22 is then added to the desired consistency. He is making a putty which he will use to back the tight corners and edges of the cowling where fabric might pull away. I take the spatula and just scrape it just like that to get a nice little even fillet. Pulling a little bit of off and back into the cup. Now I want to add a little bit of paste here to this indention here which will help build up and back up this indention here when the uh, the glass will have something to lay on and also this little curve here which we want to do a little paste fill it next Dennis will mix a base coat of resin to apply behind the paste this time he mixes a 2 ounce batch of resin with 0.4 ounce of cure. This resin system begins to cure in about 20 minutes so he wants to only mix a batch size that he can use in less than 20 minutes. 
He applies the base coat of the resin to the surface coat, careful not to disturb the putty. After the base resin coat, he is ready to begin laying in his layers of reinforcement. Dennis has pre-cut the layers of reinforcement he will need. This avoids the need to count layers as they are applied and saves cutting time after the resin is mixed. For this mold, Dennis will use four layers of two ounce fabric and eight layers of six ounce. Remember that the mold should be at least three times thicker than the parts which are to be pulled from it. He begins by laying up the first layer of two ounce fabric. This delicate fabric is excellent for wetting into small areas and allowing a uniform surface for subsequent layers. Larger molds would not require such a delicate material. The fabric begins to wet itself out from the base coat of resin. Dennis brushes additional resin on as needed. He also brushes the resin onto the fabric which lies around the mold on the board. This will form the lip of the mold. And I wet this out here. Now that that first layer of two ounces on the, the plug, it'll hold that putty in position and the putty won't move uh, at all. And see little air bubbles that you might want to just dab out with your brush and help saturate that in. Working any of your wrinkles out with your brush, your finger, gently pushing on the paste because the paste is still quite soft so you want to use a little bit of finesse there when you're pushing against the paste and try not to disturb it or distort it anyway. Got a little bubble here. I'll take my scissors and I can just cut a little bit of a cut a little bit of a slit in there. Help let that lay down a little bit. After multiple layers, this will end up being pushed right into place. Okay, that's still pretty wet, so what I'll do is I'll ready for my next layer, which will be exactly the same as this one. And I'll lay it on the same basic way. He will lay up all four layers of two ounce material before proceeding to the six ounce. About 20 minutes have passed since Dennis mixed his batch of resin, so it is necessary to mix a fresh batch to continue. He proceeds by repeating the same layup steps with the six ounce fabric. He lays in each layer, one at a time, until all eight are in place.